Excuse me. The door was open, so I walked in. That's all right. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I'm after some information about your service. I'm rather a large user. In fact, my firm uses several of your private wires. You probably should talk with the commercial manager. I'm uh, an engineer. Well, that reminds me, sir. I talked with one of your engineers nearly 20 years ago. He said something about waves. Said you needed something that would make the long distance wires talk farther. He must have meant a repeating device or an amplifier, something of that sort. Well, that was it. I'm glad you found it. Oh, we've been developing repeaters for several years, but we haven't solved the problem by any means. I thought you had. Why, down at the office, we often talk to St. Louis, Omaha. Service is pretty good, too. And now this statement by your president in the morning paper says we soon have service to the coast. Oh, he doesn't say soon, does he? No. He just believes that universal service is on the way. Well, I, I'm afraid I read it hastily. Oh, what is the difficulty? You say you have those repeater things. Yes, but they've got to be better, much better. We're in a peculiar position. We know definitely what we need, and it doesn't even exist. That puts it right up to us, doesn't it? I just can't grasp the problem. The problem is to get the telephone waves to the distant end with volume enough, without distortion, and without picking up a lot of noise. Now, the lines we're using are loaded with... Loaded? With what? Well, uh, loading in telephony is uh, rather difficult to explain to the layman. But it means that coils of wire, like this, wound on iron cores, are introduced into the line every few miles. They don't add additional energy, but they do conserve what we have. They make the entire length of telephone line more efficient. What are these uh, thingamajigs you call repeaters? They are also devices which are introduced into the line, but much farther apart than loading coils. They actually introduce new energy into the line to restore the electrical current when it becomes weakened. Well, can't you use your coils and your repeaters together? Now you've named one of the most tantalizing problems in our engineering. Here's the most important element in the repeaters we're using today. If we put a repeater employing one of these elements on a loaded circuit, the result is fairly good, up to a certain distance. Well, if one of them helps, why not use a lot of them? It can't be done. If we use more than one on the circuit, there's distortion and other troubles too. There's no point in transmitting badly distorted speech, is there? Then Denver is the limit from here. It really is a little bit more than the limit. We aren't very proud of that circuit. It's all very confusing. You've improved your line, still you need a repeater. Use a couple of repeaters, and right away you hurt your line. I never dreamed it was such a, uh, such a scientific matter. Let me put it briefly. There are three considerations to this problem of getting your remarks in New York over a wire to, uh, well, let us say, San Francisco. First, the best possible amplifying devices. Second, the best possible lines made suitable for those devices. Third, the best possible circuit arrangements for combining the two. Now, oh, I suppose that sounds pretty technical. Yes, don't tell me any more. I'm mixed up enough already. What I mean is, Everything must be engineered to work together. When we get the amplifier we're after, we may have to make adjustments in the loading, or else the amplifier won't operate. The circuit arrangements may have to be changed. We don't know that yet. Every improvement affects everything we've got already. That's telephony. Well, good luck to you. I hope you'll find what you're after. We expect to do it. It's our job to do it. We have a splendid scientific organization. Some brilliant men have been assigned to this particular problem. We're not going to give up. When you hear that we have a line to the coast, a line that talks, you'll know that America has given something mighty important to the world. It certainly will be important. Well, thank you, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye. Just what was the job they wouldn't give up? It was the same as yours today, to get the message through. But the vital challenge then was to man of science, and the message was to be the first hello across the continent of North America. How that challenge was met, 
how telephone men from coast to coast teamed up to translate the accomplishment into an agency of service is one of the great chapters of telephone history. The details of the story are legion. They involve the activities of an army led by foresight and faith and inspired by a compelling sense of high purpose in an adventure of exciting significance. To the Western telephone organizations was to come a pioneering building assignment that demanded the utmost in enthusiasm, in skill and devotion. In the record is the name of every man who helped in that construction task. Every surveyor, teamster, cook, lineman, ground man, foreman, superintendent, engineer. And the men of the long lines at headquarters and along their circuits all the way to the Rockies had coordinating responsibilities of the most exacting character that call for equal devotion and skill. It was an army that moved. It was an army that achieved. Of its activities on a wide and changing front, there can be but the merest hint in this anniversary tribute. Build that line to California. We'll make it work. We must develop another type of repeater. New York wants a report on our lines west of Denver. New York's talking about a phantom group clear across the country. This mercury arc repeater still seems too erratic. Let's see what the labs can do with this vacuum tube. We'll meet the Pacific men at the Nevada line. There's got to be a better vacuum. Start out the surveyors. Put transcontinental estimates in the budget. Keep up the mathematical research. Rebuild and repair to Salt Lake, then 130 miles west, all new. Present construction to the Reno area, then 400 miles east, all new. Set up 3,500 miles of artificial line for testing. Make sure divisions one, four, and five are ready. 500 men can do it. Let's get organized. We'll use 14,000 poles crossing Nevada. This new tube design might work with better lines. Remeasure loading and transposing. New York to Denver. It must be accurate. <laughs> The boss says 23,000 transpositions, including phantoms. The temperature, still 130. Look out for rattlesnakes. Some job, this loading every eight miles across the country. Repeaters ready for the first test? All ready. Three current. Well, the job's about done, boys. There's the last pole. 